everyone and welcome to the CX Green Room. Delighted to have you join us today. And I'm very excited to say that this session we will be uh, we will be um, sharing the results of our brand new research report and discussing the findings with our very special guest, um, Ina Eckhaus, who's joining us here from Genesis. Uh, my name is Claire Binti, Senior Director for Thought Leadership. Uh, Ginger Conlon, Thought Leadership Director, is my co-host. Hello, everyone. So as Claire said, um, joining us to share her expertise on building a culture of learning is Ina Eckhaus. She is VP of CSS Portfolio Design and Commercial Operations at Genesis. Now, before we get started talking training and development, we have our very first question, most important question of the day, of course, because this is the CX Green Room is, you know, what is your preferred green room must have item? Good question. So I don't know if it's my green room preferred must have item. I think it's my in general life must have preferred item. And that would be blueberries. I am a blueberry enthusiast. And I eat probably a pack uh, of blueberries a day, sometimes more. Well, so that would be my item of choice. That is excellent. Because Fancy glass of blueberries, Claire? Not a fancy glass of blueberries, a supermarket packet of blueberries. But I'd like to say thank you uh, for this healthy snack. The last couple of green rooms we had, uh, I ate an entire tub of Ben and Jerry's and then a huge slab of cheesecake. So I appreciate the healthy snack. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. You guys really showed up for me. <laughs> All right, so the theme of the green room today is talking about new research by Genesis and MIT Technology Review. We did a survey of 800 CX leaders worldwide looking at the, the CX employee experience and the future of work. And one of the key findings of that report, which we'll be sharing with you in the chat, um, is, is about the uh, employee life cycle and finding that learning and development is the area that business leaders think is most in need of improvement. Um, so, Ina, I wanted to talk to you about um, that, that theme. First of all, before we do, perhaps you could just introduce yourself and your role at Genesis. Yeah, I'd love to. So as you said, I am Vice President of uh, Commercial Operations and Portfolio Design for our Customer Success and Services Organization. But in addition to that, um, I have a privilege of serving as the Vice President of Genesis Beyond, which is the organization within Genesis really responsible for training customers, internal employees, partners, clients, just about everybody on our technology on customer experience um, and the world of CX. Well, that's great. We're so, yeah, we're so glad to have you, Ina. Thanks for joining I'm us. I'm happy to be here. So um, Claire mentioned that we are, um, that we're talking about the uh, recent study on the future of work, but we, we did another study on agents' values that show they love to learn um, and love opportunities for advancement. So, um, Claire, I know you you wanted to talk some more about that too. Yeah, we did this study of sixteen thousand agents worldwide, and we found that. Um, learning and development was the number one thing that people want in their jobs like this is agents telling us we enjoy learning new skills and we enjoy learning new technologies so then when we we did a poll of cx leaders we found that learning and development was the biggest gap in the employee life cycle we found a few ways that they're looking to to close that gap so one is around hiring new uh, learning and development specialists for the contact center another area is really around looking at technology um, but i'm curious there is a lot of training in the contact center it's a high training environment a lot of new people coming in What's, what, what's the gap that we see today? Why is there a lot of training but insufficient learning? So I hear this all the time, right? Whenever we talk to customers, they say, well, we have training today. 
what do you guys offer that's different, for example? Or we've been doing training for years, and yet we tend to see um, attrition or dissatisfaction with our agent population. So one of the things to consider is what we've known for a long time, which is that people really value work that's meaningful and that's impactful. And then let's look at our agent or CX population. What kind of things do they handle on a regular basis? They're handling customers who are potentially dissatisfied. They're solving problems. And in general, their day-to-day -day, um, activity tends to have almost um, kind of a negative perspective to it, right? They're always there fighting fires. So how do we take that firefighting skill and apply that meaningful and impactful work lens to it? Um, and I really challenge us to think about how we change that. You know, who is in front of your customer the most? Is it marketing? Is it sales? No, it's your, it's your CX agents. Um, they're the ones who are talking to your customers all the time. They're really your brand ambassadors. They're really the ones out there building relationships. And we know that customers or clients, they come for the product, but they stay for the relationship. Um, they stay for that interaction and that lifetime bond that they form with a brand. So now let's kind of reformulate the way we look at our CX agents. They are our brand ambassadors. That's what the meaning and impact of their work is. And once you start training agents from that lens, um, the work takes on a totally, a whole new meaning. We just got a great question um, from Trisha. What types of training are agents gravitating towards most these days? You know, you've got that great perspective, Ina, in, uh, in the beyond realm. So we still see a lot of technical training, right? People need to know how do I use this platform to be effective, but that's absolutely baseline. On top of that, I would say there's two areas. Number one, problem solving, right? All of us have heard at this point of the five whys, how to get to a cause. How do you apply that in a contact center environment? That's one. And two, how do you then take that one step further to build loyalty and to build that relationship with the person on the end of the phone? And you do that by using empathy. So in addition to problem solving, um, really a good understanding of using empathy, using relationship building to build that connection with the customer, that's absolutely top of mind. When we did the study, one of the things that we were interested in exploring was um, hybrid, work, hybrid working, remote working. Obviously, that's changing the... Um, you know, the customer experience landscape a lot. And we found that um, by 2024, about 40% of agents will have the opportunity to work from home if they want to. Six in 10 will still require some FaceTime, but there's going to be a lot of remote working. I guess that changes the learning and development environment quite specifically. Um, but leaders also, you know, with this remote model, also have a lot of concerns about productivity and how they can uh, manage for quality. How should they be thinking about that? That's a really good question. Um, so in addition to the statistics that you cited, there have also been some studies that show that even for agents that are based in a contact center, 75% of the time they're learning is virtual or is done in a virtual environment. Whereas you look back a couple of years, um, training had a very different meaning to it. So historically, how would an agent get trained? They join a company, they may go through some PowerPoint presentations, they may take some online learning, but then they were usually assigned a coach or a supervisor or somebody who is a few steps ahead of them in their profession, um, somebody who they could emulate, and somebody who can then give them some constructive feedback. Well, in this virtual training environment, that's no longer, that no longer exists, or maybe you don't have access to it, um, and it's very, very difficult. So what do we need to do? We need to kind of recreate that very nurturing um, environment virtually. The research found that um, CX leaders are planning to uh, weave a lot more AI into um, more and more areas of the contact center to support agents. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, just 
from everything from you know, what we're used to hearing about, like predictive routing to more uh, real time coaching all over the board. And so what's one AI based tool that you think like what's a favorite for you um, that contact managers should really consider adopting? Hands down, speech and text analytics. I think speech and text analytics is an absolute game changer in terms of agent coaching and development. So uh, for those of you who may not be familiar, the way speech and text analytics works is it listens to the interactions that agents have with their clients. And it picks up everything from phrases that are being said to tone of voice um, to the kinds of questions that are being asked. And then based on that, it could potentially categorize it into areas of improvement for that agent. So, for example, if you have an agent who doesn't ask enough leading questions, um, the system will prompt you to coach them in that particular area. If you have an agent who may not be showing enough empathy, you're going to have a system that prompts you to coach them in that particular area. And then based on the findings, we have solutions specifically designed for each one of these areas in a contact center that may need improvement. Um, And then the beautiful thing is with all the dashboards that are now available, you can track agent progress over time. So you can monitor the same types of phrases, the same types of sentiments over time, coach to those sentiments and really see very quick approval approval, uh, and improvement over a very short period of time. How, I mean, it's interesting having all all of this technology like surrounding the agent all the time, you know, they've got, um, you know, tools ready at their disposal, you know, all of their interactions are being listened to and analyzed. How do they feel about that level of technology involvement in their ongoing development? You know, I think it depends on who it is that we're talking about. You have a really large percentage of your high performers, of people who really are invested in their career. They want to be brand ambassadors. They want to build loyalty. They understand the importance of the role and they almost see it as a challenge, right? Like give me these goalposts. Let's work toward what great looks like so that I can achieve great experience, great NPS within my role. And um, they really embrace it, I would say, very freely, very readily. You have others, of course, who um, see it as criticism, right? Like, what is this AI tool that's watching everything that I'm doing? It doesn't really know me, doesn't really understand me. And if you are not able to get that particular agent to kind of see the benefits, to see the other side, I really consider, is that the right agent for your particular contact center? Again, this is who your customer interacts with on a regular basis. Do they represent your product? Do they represent your mission? Do they represent your brand? And these tools are there to help you achieve that. We have another uh, question that came in. Uh, Thanks, Amanda. Are you seeing agents who get trained on more than handling their day-to-day tasks uh, get promoted faster or advance faster in their career? Yeah, absolutely. Um, These are the same individuals who absolutely blow their metrics out of the water right? They learn their day-to-day task, but then they take it one step further. And again, they cross over from being a just, I don't want to say just, I don't want to minimize it, but a problem solver to somebody who may be able to diffuse a situation to the next step, somebody who can lead, somebody who can promote the brand. Um, And so of course, right? People love positive attitude. People love somebody who shows resiliency. People love somebody who's constantly achieving and progressing. And if you have individuals within the contact center who are doing that regularly, they're going to be promoted. Um, It's it's just a natural occurrence. Um, You know, we had another question come in um, about what kind of training are agents gravitating to these days? What kind of content do you see as being like especially popular? So you want your content to be very bite sized. I know people use this freely, use these terms freely, but we have folks who grew up on YouTube, right? They're used to seeing short bits of content delivered when they need it. So just in time training, um, delivered digitally. But I think that there's one step further. I think that what's missing right now in a lot of these training equations 
is the role of the supervisor, the mentor, the manager. There needs to be somebody there who's going to be reinforcing these skills. Now, it's very helpful, like I said, to have something like speech and text analytics that can provide some feedback so that it's readily um, visible what areas need the coaching. But the coaching is the important part that absolutely can't be missed. Mm -hmm. You can't just have just-in-time training. Just-in-time training will teach you how to do something, but it's mm -hmm. not going to teach you the best way necessarily to do it and the best way to show up. That's the empathy piece. That's the piece that you really, it's like a muscle. You need to build it. And the best way to build it is with a coach. Mm -hmm. And we had another question come in um, from Alex Spinesh. Are you seeing working from home has reduced agent turnarounds? Are they happier to stay at a job longer? So in the survey, we did ask, like, what are the benefits that you see of, you know, remote or hybrid working? The number one benefit that came out was the ability to retain um, staff through greater flexibility. Um, it was also around, so, so, so yes is the answer, better retention with a working from home or remote, or at least a flexible model. Um, we also saw other benefits included um, better mental health, um, lower stress, um, and also being able to access brand advocates and you know, deeper product expertise more easily. It was interesting to see that benefits like uh, reduced real estate costs were not so high on the agenda. It looks like actually um, businesses are not necessarily planning to you know, reduce a lot of their real estate, but rather to repurpose it around um, learning and development or collaboration, getting people together to look at data, work on customer journey optimization, things like that, or to, you know, refine technology. So these, you know, the, the, the real estate still has um, a piece to play. Um, on the flip side of that, we saw a lot of concerns coming through in the data around um, defining remote and hybrid working models. Like what does that model actually look like? How do we really operationalize that? Um, we also saw quite a few concerns about not having the right management and reporting structures in place for remote and hybrid work. And then we saw concerns around productivity, culture, and potentially a, a worse um, working experience, uh, a worse customer experience. So I think, you know, generally, like it is a trend, it's not going away, but there's still a lot of like real, you know, it's it's not fully baked, there's still teething problems around really how everyone is comfortable in, in this model. Yeah, yeah. And um, so speaking of questions, we've got one more. And this is this is especially important right now because one of the findings from the study was that nearly like was it 90 96% Claire correct me if I'm wrong say that it is a challenge to hire new um, new agents and at the same time the CX leaders who we who we surveyed say that they want to add more full-time staff to their contact center staff. So how do we get the next generation of talent interested in working in the contact center? Great question. Thanks, Amanda. Ina, how do we do it? It's a tough nut to crack. And it's one that we've been thinking about for quite a while. Um, and like I said, I think part of it is redefining what it means to work in a CX contact center, right? What is the primary role of the job? What's the function really about? I think we need to reformulate our perspective on that. Um, but we've, within Genesis, we've really uh, kind of taken this to heart, this question to heart. And we wanted to see if we can make an impact globally um, by putting a new program into place. And we recently put this program into place. It's called the CX Creator Program. We've partnered with several universities globally, and we found very diverse talent across these universities who are very interested in engineering, um, who are interested in potentially working with customers, but they don't know necessarily in what capacity. And if you think about it, these are 20, 21, 22 year olds who are really thinking about where do I want to take my career? They're developing these great basic skills and they're looking out and saying, what do I do with it? 
So we've partnered with these universities and we've put together CX programs where we go in, we teach them about customer experience, we teach them about what it means to be a brand ambassador, we teach them um, what the Genesis platform is and how to do things like bot design. And then we take these groups, uh, we put them into teams so that you get really diverse cross collaboration across these various thought groups um, globally. And we partnered them with some of our biggest customers. So last year we partnered them with Uber, this year we partnered them with eBay. And these large customers um, give these students a challenge so that they can see how cool it is to really work in the contact center space and environment. And these customers, uh, sorry, these students um, take the challenge on, they develop to that challenge, and then they present their solutions back to our customers. And the customers evaluate them. We have a winner at the end of this program. We make it really exciting, really engaging. And this year, we had 80 students who participated. And in two months, they learned enough about the CX space, the retail space, bot design, and our platform that they were able to design a hands-on bot solution for eBay, at the end of which one of the executives at eBay said, can I please have the roster of these students? Because, man, I'd like to hire them. Um, so you make the work exciting. You really show people what it means to be in the contact center space, the role that they can play, and how to build the skill set around it. Excellent. I love it. Such a great program. And we hope to talk more about that on the CX Green Room soon. And I'd love to see it grow and flourish. And I'd love to see us turn the 80 students into 800, into 8,000, and really transform CX globally and the kind of talent that's in the pipeline. Sounds great to us. And so, uh, Ina, thank you for all the great insight today um, and advice. I know our, our, our audience learned a lot. We got some great questions coming in. And um, you know, so, so thanks for joining us. Hope to have you back to talk more about Beyond, more about the other, the, the university program. Clara, any final thoughts? No, I think that brings us to a close. Uh, in LinkedIn, it would be great if you can um, share and like this uh, recording with your, um, this uh, live event with your network and look forward to seeing you next time. My absolute pleasure. If any of you out there have any great ideas that we did not consider or discuss, I'd always love to hear back from you. And um, thank you for having me on today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Una. Bye. Thanks.